Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to another edition of Crush Lusher Television. All right, so we got to do the do now. All this stuff right here, one, two, three, four, you try and do without a calculator. So let's see if we can do it. All right, here you go. So number one, let's see what we got. So I wrote it in my notes, do now review. So we're going to find the total distance from t equals zero to t equals three. That's what it says. Okay. So it gives me the velocity, and I know that position, velocity, acceleration. So if I go from the velocity to the position, that means I need to find the antiderivative. So distance is also the absolute value. So I need to find the integral between 0 and 3 of the absolute value of 6t minus t squared. The area under the curve, the absolute value of that area in the curve, dt. Okay, so there we go. Let's make sure it focuses so you can see. Okay, now, so I want the area under this curve. So if I look at the area under this curve, I'm going to make sure that I have no negative area because that negative area would become positive. But if I plug in zero here, if I plug in zero, zero minus zero. So zero, zero is where it starts. And also, if I factor out a t here, you have 6 minus t. And so 0 is an answer, and then 6 minus 6 is another answer. And so 0 and 6 are the zeros, or where it intersects the axis when velocity is 0. And it's an upside-down parabola because you have a negative in front of the t squared. That's the coefficient, so it looks like this. So this is what it might look like. And so 0 to 3 is all going to be above the axis, so you're good to go. So the absolute value actually doesn't matter in this problem. So first thing I do is I find the antiderivative of this. So I'm going to use a fundamental theorem of calculus. So I'm going to add 1, so it's going to be 6t squared divided by 2 minus t to the 4 divided by 4. And I'll plug in 0 and 3. So I'm going to simplify this as... 3t squared minus t, sorry, this is t to the third over 3, my bad, minus t to the 3 over 3. And I'm plugging in 0 and 3. So 3 first. So here you go. 3 times 3 squared minus 3 to the third divided by 3. Minus, when I plug in zero, I'm just going to get zero here. So that's zero. So zero minus zero. So this is going to be three squared is nine times three is 27. Minus 27 divided by three, which is nine. 27 minus nine is 18. There we go. Sorry, it doesn't look like 18. There we go. 18. Okay, let's see what we got. Is that an answer? Yeah, D is the answer for the first one. D. Okay, let's keep going. Next one looks like a chain rule one. All I can do is I find the derivative of this. So it looks like a composite function. So y prime is going to be 5x to the third minus cosine x to the fourth times derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared minus, ooh, what's the derivative of negative cosine? Sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. So I have negative cosine. The derivative, ooh, back to the top is just going to be sine minus sine of x. So it's 5 times 3x squared minus sine of x times this to the fourth. Let's see if we can find the answer here. Yeah, right there. E is the answer. We got E. Cool. All right. Now, let's see. Okay. So part three is a little bit tougher. So a tank contains 50 liters of oil at time t equals four. So we start at time t equals 4. Oil is being pumped into the tank at this rate, where R of t is measured in liters per hour, and t is measured in hours. Selected values of R of t. Okay, so use a right Riemann sum with three subintervals from the table. What is the approximation of the number of liters of oil that are in the tank at time t equals 15? So i got to figure out all of this. Plus, I got to add this 50 at the end because it was for the total amount of liters. So you can't forget that 50 that started. OK, so let's do it. Here you go. So I drew a picture. So I always draw a picture when I forget right Riemann sum, midpoint Riemann sum, 
or left reruns, I'm always just draw a picture. It always helps me. Okay, so we're finding the area under the curve approximation between 4 and 15 of R of T dt. Always write this notation, even though it's a multiple choice. Actually, it's not a multiple choice. So make sure you write this notation because you might get a point for writing the integral. Bam. So write Riemann sum, the area under this curve. So I don't know what the hell this curve looks like, but I just know these particular points. And so the area under whatever this is, is just an approximation. So you go up to 5.6 over and down, up to 5.9 over and down, up to 6.2 over and down. So those are my three. So that's going to be three is the base and the height of the first one is 5.6 plus this is seven to 12. So that's going to be five is the base and then 5.9 is top plus uh, the last one, four to seven, which is three is the base and 6.2 is the top. And then I have to add, so that's the accumulation of the area, sorry, the water going into the tank from four to 15. And then I have to add the 50 that start at the beginning. So 50 to start plus all of this water that went into the tank between four and 15. Okay. So that's going to be three. So three times 5.6, this, this. So I can just copy this down. Actually, I don't actually have to figure this out because it's a free response question and free response. You don't have to um, simplify all the way. All you have to do is do this. So it's 50 plus that. Cool. Actually, is it multiple choice? Let's see. Yeah, it is. Okay. So we got to do it out. Fine, 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 fine. All right, fine. We'll do it out. My bad. I thought it was just a, a regular free response question. So we'll do it out. Okay. No problem. So do, 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 do three times 5.6. So do, 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 do. this is 16.8 plus five times 5.9, which is 29.5. And then three times 6.2, which is 18.6. Add those up 29.5. Boom, plus 16.8, boom, plus 50, boom. I got 114.9. Let's see if we get the same thing up here. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, yeah, C, C, C. The uh, common misconceptions, you don't add that 50, so make sure you add that 50, because that answer is there. It's sitting there if you don't put it there, right? So you add that 50. All right, cool. Last one. Number four. Number four. Number four. Number four. Cool. All right, so I'm going to find the area of the region, y equals uh, e to the x over 2, and the line x equals 2. All right, cool. All right, so I need to go to a new page. New page. So y equals x over 2. So you can't use a calculator for this one. And so y equals e to the x over 2. So I don't know what that looks like, but I know that this is an exponential function. An exponential function looks like this. And I know you've seen a lot of graphs like this about what's happening with the coronavirus uh, infections across the country and across the world is exponentially growing like this. So e to some power, whenever you have an exponent right here, that means you're growing exponentially. So the graph looks something like this. And then we have, it's in the first quadrant, so it starts here, and then when x equals 2, let's say there, so that is your area. So you have top minus bottom. So the bottom is just 0 right here, so it's just the integral between 0 and 2 of e to the x over 2 dx. That's the area. So now you have to solve this without a calculator, no problem. So e functions always, you write it down to find the antiderivative, and then you divide by the derivative of the exponent. If it were derivative, I'd multiply by that this uh, derivative. But if it's antiderivative, I divide. I do the opposite. So dividing by the derivative, which is a half, dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2 over 1, right? Dividing by a half is multiplying by the reciprocal, 2 over 1. So there it is, and I'm plugging in 0 and 2. Right there to find my fundamental theorem of calculus. So it's 2e to the 2 over 2 minus 2e to the 0 over 2. So you plug in 2 and you plug in 0. So e to the 2 over 2 is this e to the 1. 
e to the zero, anything to the zero power is one, like that. So it's two e minus two. Is that an answer or do I have to simplify it more? I don't know. What is it, two e minus two? Yeah, a, got it. All right, cool. So that are all the answers for those. Hit me up with any questions. Give me uh, um, a heads up if you're confused about anything. Nice job. Next thing you got to do, ooh, is this in the next video. See if you can do it. Good work, everybody. Take care.